like everyone to close your eyes. No peeking. I want you to imagine that you have had an epic night of sleep. You are feeling like a million bucks and you are feeling fully rejuvenated. Now open your eyes. I want you to imagine that this sheet of paper represents how you feel when you wake up in the morning. You are energized and you are ready to take on the day. Now, as you navigate through your day, for every negative interaction, I want you to remove seven pieces of paper from your sheet. And for every positive interaction, you can add one piece back. That's the effect that negativity has on our well-being. Imagine hearing, you're so stupid. What the hell did you do that for? You're fat. Why are you being so rude? Can't you do anything right? I spent the first 18 years of my life gripping onto that last piece of paper nearly every single day. I grew up in a household where verbal abuse was constant. Um, my parents were master manipulators, and everyone believed that they were the best parents. It got tricky for them, though, when my dad would lose his temper and he would beat me. I lost track of the number of times that I went to school with a black eye. I vividly remember in grade one, having my parents coach me on what to say to my teacher if they asked what happened to me. I was to respond, I fell on the stairs. I will admit though, I had so many black eyes growing up, but I did have one legitimate black eye in grade five. When my sister went to take a slap shot, she missed the puck and she whacked me right in the face. I forgave her for that. <laughs> um, I remember on numerous occasions, my dad would be fixing something and he would send me to go and get a tool for him. Holy crap, if I didn't find that tool fast enough, or heaven forbid, I came back with the wrong tool, there was hell to pay. Let's just say I quickly learned the difference between a pipe wrench and a vice grip. <laughs> One of the most traumatic experiences that I went through um, in my childhood was when my older sister was learning to drive. She had made a wrong turn and my dad beat her to a pulp. I witnessed my dad nearly killing my sister. There wasn't enough makeup in the world to cover the bruises from that incident. I was 14 at the time, and I remember looking up the children's helpline, and I started to dial the number. I hung up and swore that if it ever happened again, then I would call. Now, growing up in a household um, with abuse, um, I was constantly walking on eggshells, and I was absolutely petrified of doing something wrong. I lived in fear. Now, the physical abuse, it was tough, but the bruises always healed. The emotional abuse of having parents that would call you names, yell, and be overly critical of everything you did left me with lifelong scars that have been extremely difficult to heal from. Thankfully, I escaped childhood abuse when I went away to university. I, uh, when I was at university, I escaped the abuse and it was like putting on a Band-Aid, but I started to embrace life. When I finished university, I uh, landed a great job, I met my husband, and I got married. It felt like my life was starting to fall into place. 
Now, marriage is tough, and it requires a lot of hard work and commitment from both partners. Now, in our marriage, we were dealing with a number of issues. Uh, we, were, um, we were struggling and we're going through uh, infertility. Um, we were navigating my husband's turbulent job positions. <laughs> my family will get that one. <laughs> um, and his business had gone bankrupt and um, he was facing a number of lawsuits. So we had sought out marriage counseling and um, at my husband at the time, uh, he came along with me for a couple of times, um, but he quickly decided that the counselors were off the rockers because they actually suggested that he needed to work on some stuff too. So he stopped going. Um, he, um, he truly felt and believed that all of the issues in our marriage was all my fault because I was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder from the abuse that I suffered as a child. Now, I'm not going to deny that I was suffering from PTSD, but it certainly didn't help that he was gaslighting the situation. He would be condescending, make me feel worthless, and he made me feel like I was damaged goods. Over time, it became apparent that I had chosen a partner that was exactly like my father. My husband had suggested that we stay together for the sake of the kids and live a loveless marriage. It was at that point I knew I had to walk away. So the day that our marriage was over, I, um, I had a really tough time. Um, my husband had ripped off the Band-Aid. He had stolen that last piece of paper that I had fiercely gripped on to my entire life, and I completely fell to pieces. When I had fallen to pieces, it was at this moment that I had suicidal thoughts. I had thought of numerous ways to end my life. And my counselor saved my life. I had the courage to get up and I swore that I was never gonna be in this position ever again. So I got up and I started to focus on things that were important to me. My two kids gave me the courage to get up and make a life for myself. Um, they have been uh, absolutely amazing that I wanted to ensure that both of these guys had a wonderful life and that they had a role model of somebody that they could look up to. I have been a single mom for the last 10 years and I've been rocking it. <laughs> I, uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed um, being their mom and uh, I fully embrace every opportunity that I can with them. Of course, I wouldn't be able to be up here today and to face sort of day to day without all of my wonderful friends. And a, a number of them are here tonight. And my family. Now, um, I truly want to thank all of you for being here tonight. Um, that these guys, as soon as they heard I was taking the stage, they raced to get tickets for this event, even after they found out I wasn't doing stand-up comedy tonight. 
I also want to thank them for uh, not tossing chocolates or carrots at me tonight. <laughs> they threatened. <laughs> I truly appreciate that. Now, uh, what I did focus on is um, I looked at my life and the things that were important to me. Um, I was thankful for the fact that I had my health. I had a wonderful career and a home. I started to focus on myself, that I started to do things that I enjoyed doing, uh, running, reading, um, I learned to sail. I also um, took up a hobby of making cakes. Um, I have made hundreds of cakes. <laughs> um, I've even made a couple of wedding cakes uh, for one of my friends here <laughs> in the audience tonight. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoy uh, doing that. Um, I've even challenged myself that uh, I had a couple crazy friends suggest, hey, let's do a triathlon. Okay. Um, <laughs> six months before I competed in my first triathlon, I couldn't swim one length of the pool. <laughs> so needless to say, I completed not one but two triathlons and I didn't drown. <laughs> right? Now, I truly worked on um, believing in myself that uh, I've had to work immensely on my self-esteem, that I've been broken down over the years, that uh, I've worked a lot on that. Now, uh, Kevin can attest to the fact that he'll get every now and again that, oh my God, Kevin, I'm so impressed. Guess what I did today? So uh, anyway, he's, uh, he's a good sport about it. Um, I have become an advocate for mental health awareness. Just with everything that I've gone through, um, I am very open about it and I talk about it. Um, because of what I've gone through, um, I've actually saved a couple people from committing suicide. There's a number of different causes I like to support. Um, every 16 weeks, I go and I donate blood. I've got my blood donation partner here tonight. We are scheduled to go again next Tuesday for anyone else that would like to join us. Um, now, this next piece was extremely difficult for me. To open up my heart and to be open to the possibility of loving somebody again. Um, I have been extremely fortunate to have met such an incredible man that he has been there to support me in so many different ways and I couldn't be more thankful for him being a very integral part of my life and I truly want to thank him for that. Now, I've, um, I've had a very difficult life. I've faced a number of adversities over the years. Um, I have survived childhood abuse, divorce, post-traumatic stress disorder, thoughts of suicide, and I have been able to get up and start piecing my life back together. Now, my life, my puzzle's not complete, and it's not perfect, but this is my puzzle, and this is Sweet Caroline. <laughs> 